Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and today we're going to do a little operation that I wasn't anticipating but has become necessary, and I'll explain why. Um, last week, a swarm came out of one of those hives down there and went into this box, or at least that's what I thought happened. It turns out that the bulk of the, of the, of the swarm actually ended up in this little uh, top bar nuke. Now, we thinking that this one was queenless and this one had the queen, we actually put some queen cells in this one. So they are probably now, have now been torn down, I expect. We'll find out in a minute. Um, however, we need to solve this problem because there's bees in this box. There's not, not a huge number of bees, but there's, there's, you know, there, there's some bees, okay? Um, but they are queenless and they're not really doing anything in particular. So we want to combine these two colonies um, and we're going to do that by combining them into a full-size top bar hive, which is over there. So we can't move these bees um, because obviously they'll locate to this spot. So what we're going to do is move the hive. We're going to put it on this spot and then we're going to combine the two colonies into one. That's the plan. So this is something that can happen if you leave a hive empty, you get a wasp starting to build a little nest in there. We have to disavow this particular wasp of her ambitions. There's nothing in here, but wasp nests are quite fascinating things actually. They're, they chew up wood make it into paper so you get these amazing kind of paper lantern things and in the bottom you can see I hope the um, hexagonal cells at the bottom of that so wonderful little things but not what we want in our hives and this has a rather dry looking eco floor and I think perhaps we'll take the opportunity of just dampening it slightly. So um, I think the first thing we're going to do is lift out the combs from this little top bar nuke. This, we can use our new top bar hive tool and I'm hoping that they haven't attached anything to the sides because one of the problems with these little nukes is that you can't obviously free comb from the sides until you've lifted it which is too often too late but I think we're okay all right so here's the first one this is all honey. So we're going to put that. I think we put that away from the um, the entrance. The entrance is towards that end. All right. Well, now we'll do the same thing, but with my veil on. Comb number two, also full of honey. And then, remember, this is only a week after they swarm. These guys have really worked hard. <coughs> Spray. Cheers. <coughs> the reason I want to spray them down quickly is I only, I only want one working gap here. Like that. In fact, what I'm going to do is to put extra bars in here because they're so good at comb building they're going to fill those bars up very quickly. <clears throat> very important of course with with bars like this especially full of honey is that you don't tilt them 
again, look at that, that's amazing, in a week they filled that with honey, well they filled it with nectar and they turned half of it into honey. And on that side, in fact it looks like they've already got queen cells, they're trying to, um, looks like they're superseding their queen already, or was that, no that's not one that we put in there, that's a brand new queen cell in there, so they are, they're superseding their swarm queen, which is not uncommon. So we'll let them do that. We always let, my policy is to never interfere with supersedure because the bees have decided for reasons of their own that their queen needs replacing and I don't consider that my uh, judgment on that matter is, uh, is any better than the bees so I let them do as they please on that one. If they want to supersede then they supersede. Okay, and here's the fourth one, and again, loads of honey, and I can see at least one queen cell, possibly two, three, no, several queen cells in there, so they are really determined. Uh, it, it is, of course, possible, when they're making multiple cells like that, it's just possible that they might decide to swarm again. Well, hopefully they won't do that, but okay, if they decide to, then so be it. And here's the last of the combs from the nuke, and again, loads of nectar, loads of honey, comb building going on at the bottom, you can see where it's slightly wobbly, that's chains of bees building comb. Pop those in, we'll add, um, actually no, we won't add any more bars to the end there because I want to retain this gap here and just in case they need feeding at some stage which I doubt they will but so I'm going to in fact instead to add another coat another bar to this end and already you can see we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bars some of which are, well half of which are full and half of which are empty. So these guys have got plenty to do and lots of energy to do it. So there's still a load of bees in the box here. We, in fact I think what I'll do is to, um, I'll take away the, the end follower. And I'll shake these into the end of the hive and I'll put the empty box just down below it so that the, uh, any flying bees in that box can find their way back up. These guys will walk into the hive. This other box of bees here, we're going to similarly shape them in front of the hive. There's not that many in here really. If anybody's wondering if these bees are stinging me, the answer is yes they are. <laughs> well some of them are anyway. There's something about hot dry weather that often does seem to upset bees a bit, so I have noticed lately mine have got um, a little bit stroppier than I would like. Okay, so I'm going to put that, that in at an angle which allows um, these to walk around it. Just like that. And uh, they'll be able to walk into that space now. So I recommend that uh, your follower board should have holes in them. Just one. Uh, it's about 20... 20 to 22 millimetres um, and about halfway up from the bottom or down from the top depending on which we look at it doesn't matter exactly where it is but the purpose of that hole is well multiple I suppose one is that so the bees can if they get the wrong side of it for some reason for example there's a load of bees down here 
which haven't quite followed instructions and they're hanging around on the wrong side of the hive. Now, at the moment, the other entrance is open. There's three holes right here. And so those bees could find their way into the, that hole, but if they came in here and it was an empty cavity um, with no other bees in it, they might just, well, they could die from starvation for a park or anything else. Mm -hmm. So if there, if there is a hole in the follower board, they can come in through these holes and find their way into the hive through the central hole there. Um, obviously, that hole could become um, a potential unofficial entrance, and in which case it's probably a good idea to uh, put a cork in it, um, as the saying goes, and um, the, but do that obviously after all your bees are in. Uh, but to prevent wasps getting in there, um, I, I suggest you close it, and you, then you can. The other use for it is that if you need to feed your bees at any point, um, you can simply put feed on this side of the hole and they will come through and take it and go back again. I usually do that at the other end of the hive um, using inverted jars, and I'll do, do another video about that at some point. Um, but you can see here that there are some bees, well, there were <laughs> some bees that were quite curious about what was going on in that hole there. I'm just gonna nudge these into the air, and uh, some of them will just fly back to the proper entrance, but we'll see what happens. Does. Yeah, because when you when you want bees to do something, they won't do it. But it's, you know, it's quite possible that some bees might find their way in there and then move into the uh, hive. Obviously, we'll keep an eye on that because we don't want it to end up being a target for robbers. But the bees in this apiary aren't really prone to robbing anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Now back to this um, side, you can see there's, there's bees fanning down the sides here. So they're trying to encourage the flying bees to, to come into this, um, into this uh, behind this board and into the hive proper. And you can see, if you point the camera straight down there, then, uh, you can see um, a whole row of bees along the edge here. And I'm just going to, I don't want to put that back and crush any bees so just a quick light spray to get them off the edge and then I can just replace the that's it that's just at an angle at the moment to create a gap so that the bees can get through while they're still in the air like this but uh, we'll come along and close that in a day or two to make sure it doesn't get um, abused so at the moment then we've got a follower board here follower board here uh, about 10 bars in between. We've got another 10 bars or so over this side ready to add to this colony because they have proven themselves to be very rapid um, comb builders. So we want to make sure that we stay ahead of them and uh, we'll come back maybe in a week and see how they're getting on.